call. Or, She's looking for food. Red Sorry. Wouldn't you know it? We found ourselves back in Australia just five short months after our Melbourne trip. This wasn't really planned, but Cebu Pacific gave us both a one-way ticket for free when they landed us in Clark instead of Manila last time. We thought that this would be its best use. Anyway, our visa was good for one whole year. So hello, Sydney! The flight we took from Manila leaves before 12 midnight. So this was another red-eye flight for us. Sleep-deprived and lacking rest, our first order of business was, yep, you guessed it right, food. In Sydney, what did you get? I got a meat goreng sandwich. It's Indonesian chicken with triple smoked bacon and some noodles, which I wasn't expecting. And the latte. What did you get? A Reuben. The Reuben is a bit um, dainty because of her base spread thing. This is the last strand. A defunct salon along Devonshire Street on Surrey Hills. From outside, you won't think much of it as it lines up with coffee shops and restaurants. This obscure storefront is actually our Airbnb for the next 7 nights. Its retail cut meant that this place has on-street access and probably the most convenient Airbnb we've ever stayed in. It was complete with a living room, kitchen, and backyard so we couldn't be any happier. We called it our speakeasy Airbnb. After a day's worth of traveling, we were pretty much spent and found ourselves at the clock, one of the most historic pubs in Surrey Hills. I love this place so much, I would literally have a drink here each night of our stay. For our first full day in Sydney, we didn't want to hit the tourist spot just yet. Instead, we wanted to explore the city on foot and discover the nearby neighborhoods of Darlinghurst, Paddington, and King's Cross. Australia is notorious for its warm weather. Not if you go in August though, we went right smack in the middle of winter. And although they're gentle compared to winters in the Northern Hemisphere, it was a shock to us coming from the tropics. Bundling up and getting your second and third cups of coffee are recommended. Although we don't know where one stopped and where another started, we did like exploring the different neighborhoods surrounding Surrey Hills. Darlinghurst had an edgier feel as you built up towards the CBD, while Paddington had a laid-back vibe, but a hot spot for fashion for already established and up-and-coming designers. Janessa, of course, fangirled her way all through Pretty Paddington. We finally got out of our neighborhood of Surrey Hills and made our way into the CBD, which was just two stops away by train. Now this isn't boozing up first thing in the morning, although I wouldn't mind. This was our brunch at the grounds of the city. Its original location at Alexandria is more famous, but we thought that this might be a nice alternative. The agenda today was to get lost in the CBD as we made our way through to Sydney's iconic landmarks. What greeted us on the way was the impressive 
Queen Victoria Building and the Bird Cages at Angel Place, which is a public artwork entitled Forgotten Songs. We were blown away by how chill this iconic landmark ended up being. Sure, it was full of visitors, but you can practically lay back and have the day go by. So that's what we exactly did. Shuffling between the rocks nearby in Circular Key, we took in the sights with a schooner on hand. That's local for a glass that's almost a pint of beer. I was personally in awe at how majestic the Sydney Opera House came to be. To be honest, it was one of those landmarks that I really didn't make anything of when I'd see it in pictures. But seeing it up close, there was something about it that was just breathtaking and I couldn't help but have a hard time peeling my eyes off of it. As dusk came, we were getting hungry. This was a random find and we didn't have reservations dust to mine. But man oh man was this special. This was hands down the best meal we had during the trip. This was a perfectly prepared sous vide steak. Restaurant Hubert was a perfect way to end the rest of the night in a crowded room with a drink on hand. As we prepare for another full day of eating, here we are, eating up to make sure that we're up for the task. <laughs> Today we were headed to Newtown, which was two stops southwest from where we were staying. This was the other place where we considered getting an Airbnb but it was a little further out so we took a day trip here instead. Newtown is an eclectic neighborhood teeming with quirky shops, pubs, and cafes. Behind this seemingly rundown frontage was actually a huge pub called Mary's. The place is a gothic masterpiece that happens to serve excellent fried chicken and craft beer. We thank old friends Justine and Paolo for taking us here and showing us the rest of their lovely neighborhood. We were priming up for a Saturday night out, but first, no missed steaks. One tip I have is to look for restaurants that allow BYO or bring your own booze. We brought our own wine bottle here for dinner. We did a pub crawl through a few places, but with all the booze, photos and videos were the last thing on our minds. Here's a few we managed to dig up. Good thing there weren't any more. <laughs> it was of course a late and slow morning getting up from partying the previous night. This one wanted to have a traditional Sunday roast, so we had that to look forward to, and just a relaxing day at the beach. This was a lovely Sunday at Bondi Beach. But don't let the sun fool you, we're still in the middle of an Australian winter, so we remained bundled up and unfortunately could not lounge around in our regular beach wear. Cold weather did not stop a lot of these locals from taking a dip though. You gotta love the active and adventurous spirit of Australians. As for myself, I'm doing what I'm great at, having a beer by the beach. So we watched the day go by and lost ourselves in Bondi amidst the local cafes. 
We also enjoyed spotting the occasional wildlife in the area, such as these cockatoos before sunset. Dinner was at Masaleria, where you picked your meat from their display before it got cooked. Thanks to Janessa for researching and treating this one in its entirety. Today's agenda is something that I've been really looking forward to. But first, coffee. And of course, the brunch that goes with that. Now off we go. While the trains and buses were highly reliable in Sydney, we realized that local ride sharing apps were a great alternative. Since we were new users on their platforms, the first few rides often came at a great discount comparable to public transportation. So we used these especially at times when we need the convenience. Check out Didi, Bolt, and all the cars when you're in town. And so, this is what I've been waiting for. The Sydney Fish Market. You've seen me devour one steak after another on this trip. But the truth is, I probably love seafood more when they're at their freshest. So this is my mecca. Give me a nice shard to pair, and I'm in heaven. That's gonna be incredible. <laughs> We had a pretty open schedule today and we just needed to be in Chinatown by dinner. So from here, we took a leisurely walk and took in the sights walking along the riverfront of Darling Harbor before getting back into the CBD. For dinner, we met up again with Justine and Paolo and other friends traveling from Manila. We were two days away from leaving, and we realized we haven't even visited any of the museums. We were too busy eating. Anyway, before we went back to eating, we visited the Art Gallery of New South Wales. Since this was going to be our second to the last dinner, we wanted to go big once more. We're getting set to go home soon, but before then I wanted to share with you our usual stroll here in Surrey Hills. I don't think I've ever identified with the neighborhood so much. The pubs and cafes that are stones throw away from our Airbnb make me wonder what it would be like to live here. Now one can dream, can't one? And for a nightcap, a sampler of craft beers. I was wrong, now this is heaven. This is Burke Street Bakery. This has been an unassuming little bakery around the corner from our Airbnb. Little did we know that they are world famous with having a branch as far out as New York City. This was a fitting last breakfast for us with their superbly baked pastries. So on our last day, we were headed to Manly Beach. The popular way to get there is by riding a ferry but we thought of changing this up by riding a bus and actually passing through the Sydney Harbour Bridge. We were feeling a little pressured and felt like we didn't see too many of the sights, so instead of having a chill day packing, 
we decided to go on this last minute trip. But I guess old habits die hard. The first thing we did when we got there is visit the Four Pines Brewery, one of my preferred craft beer brands in Australia. <laughs> and then we were off to appreciate the rest of Manly. Manly Beach was a perfect end to the surprise of a trip. There were picture-perfect moments such as this old couple sitting on a bench with palm trees in their view. And then this lady singing Que Sera Sera in perfect pitch. And no, this isn't our Uber. Although we were headed back and flying home the next day. I hope it's been a fun ride for you as it has been for us. Thank you.